guest. Uh, why don't we introduce the guest? We do have a guest uh, that I'm very happy to have on today. Uh, he's a journalist, uh, writer. He's the founder of uh, Current Revolt. Uh, that we've uh, you've probably seen us retweet every once in a while. And uh, the gentleman that was uh, covering uh, Stephen Crowder's divorce hearing last week, uh, Tony Ortiz, who's joining us here uh, live today. How you doing, man? How you doing, man? Oh, you're, I think oh. you're muted. Yeah, you have you're to muted. mute yourself. You, you might be muted. Yes, there uh, you go. Boomer moment. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> good, up, man? Good. Honestly, no. Good, that was dude. actually very professional of you. A lot of people don't, don't mute. mute. A lot you of people don't mute. You know what I mean? And they're like, you know, brushing their teeth in the background <laughs> and doing. You're like, hey, man, yeah, we're just going to do the intro for yeah. no. But, <laughs> my nose or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's, uh, yeah, it's good to have you on, man. We uh, we touched base briefly this weekend, and you kind of came on with very little notice. So I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, so you were at the, the divorce hearing last week for uh, Crowder and his wife. Um, so, uh, what, what, I gotta ask you, what possessed you to go out there? Cause I know, uh, um, I mean, I know the story, but in case people haven't read the article yet, what possessed you to go out there in the first place? Yeah. Y'all have been covering it a lot longer than <clears throat> I have, or what I've been aware of, you know, the only reason we covered it is it's Texas related. So for those that don't read us and for your viewers, we just cover Texas related news, nothing outside of Texas. So if. Joe Biden does something retarded. We don't cover it. It's just because it's unrelated to us. So <laughs> Stephen Crowder resides in Texas, and he's a Texas political figure. And um, he made the choice to make it, make his divorce incredibly public uh, of his own accord. So we decided to attend because nobody else was covering it. Um, he's been the only one that's been talking about it and giving his side of things. And so we thought it was worth us um, giving some balance to that. Yeah, I mean, it's it it it, it, it what we, you know we we've been covering when we were covering him, it was absolutely it was absolutely not cool to criticize the stuff that's now come to light. A lot yeah. of it, anyway, the anger issues, the turnover rate, all that kind of stuff, and the NDAs. I mean, it really goes into like you know kind of the whole thing because you know we 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 we're pretty we we'll consider ourselves a, a right wing comedy show, but it's like you know. I think we tell people sometimes like we build up these walls because people are kind of saying what you like, what you want to hear, and then you kind of people do both sides of this. They turn blinders like there's a, there's something going on, you know. And for us, it was a, you know, everybody around him was scared to talk. The NDA is like what's going on, the anger issues and stuff like that. So you know, we of course kind of felt vindicated when the initial story came out. We're like we we told you so, guys. We told you this is what we were saying. Um, but um, how many times have you been called a leftist? Oh yeah, uh, that's what I want to know. Couple days. Yeah, it's pretty par for the course. You know, our coverage, <laughs> yes. you know, we're we're pretty well known for covering kind of the TMZ stuff here in Texas. We've covered, um, I think, 12 affairs now with politicians in Texas Ooh. that have cheated on their wives, uh, almost exclusively Republican. It's just because, you know, in, in Texas, if you don't like the way Texas is running, you, you got to blame a Republican. Republicans are in power. So we don't spend too much time criticizing Democrats just because Democrats aren't in control. Here in Texas. So, yeah, the Steven Crowder thing, you know, uh, when we when we expressed some kind of criticism for him on Twitter, kind of late into all this, you know, people called us leftists or Democrats and things like that. It's just as you know, it's just nonsense. Um, people don't want their heroes attacked by any means. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, a tri it's tribalism. It's tribalism. And it's 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 weird because, you know, we if, if we criticize somebody on the left, of course, we get the we get the pylons. You're Nazis. You're this. You're that. Whatever. And then as soon as we criticize, and, and again, we're not out to like attack people. It's just when we see stuff that somebody does, it's very like disingenuous, or we know the real story. It's hard for us to not go, "Hey, this guy's kind of lying." And then of course, it's just, "Oh, you leftist. You're probably anti. You're not even real concerned." And it's like, "All right, man. I guess I just wanted to tell you the truth that I heard <laughs> that I watched this thing unfold and you weren't there and I'm just telling you whatever man you're just attacking my hero and it's it is what it is you went there um so you went there and you were originally this is this is crazy you were taking notes with your phone right yeah, you know, I wanted to be respectful of the court. So and this in retrospect, this was probably stupid. Um, I didn't want to take my laptop. I didn't want to be that guy clicking around in court, you know, typing away um, like an asshole. So I, I just took my phone. Um, I can type very fast on my phone as most people probably can, you know. Um, so I thought I'll take my phone and I'll just be respectful, I'll sit in the back and just, you know, watch things happen. And so, yeah, I walked in with my phone ready to take notes. And, you know, before things had even, st even started, you know, you could see both people on each side of the 
you know, aisle, you know, Stephen and his legal team on, on their side, and Hillary, a couple of members of her family, I assume, and um, her lawyer on, on, on the other side. And I happened to sit on Stephen's side, and everybody was looking at me like I was like really out of place. And I, I did, I felt out of place, but not my first time in a court hearing. I, I've attemp- attended quite a few. Um, so, you know, I knew right off the bat that, you know, recordings and video weren't allowed and, and, and photo. So, you know, I just sat there and ready to take notes. Yeah, and so 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 that that's so you, you look, man. Anybody who who's any any courtroom of any any courtroom is filled that has somebody of this of his stature, his level. And he's look, he's one of the. He's like, say what you want about him. He has a lot of followers. He is a mainstream conservative person. So, I, I find it odd how defensive they they got that this was being covered. Like, if I remember correctly, we covered it on the show, and I think you brought it up in the article too. He was saying, like, you know, I want everything to be in public. I want everybody to see what we're... I want it. He wanted to unseal medical records. Yeah, he wanted to unseal medical records. You know, we're going to basically... I don't know. I'm not saying... It sounded like a threat, you know? And it's it's really odd how the guy who, in our opinion, is supposed to be free speech warrior. We're a free speech warrior. We want all the information. All of a sudden, like, that's the next thing. They asked to seal the courtroom. Yeah, and that's like what you said. That's my issue with this: is that Crowder has built his platform based off of free speech. He's a, a free speech, you know, hero. He constantly pushes for free speech. You know, he's gone after and gone at it with YouTube because they've they've censored him, right? And then so you've got you've got that issue, right? Mm-hmm. And then and then you compound that with the fact that Stephen has, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna refer to him by his first name, not out of disrespect, but just because his last his wife's last name is Crowder as well. Right, but, it makes sense. You know, Stephen um, has also. Uh, been very public about his divorce. He's asked for transparency, even revealing medical information, which is really crazy. I mean, I can I can see wanting to release maybe transcripts, but to go so far as to release release the the uh, the white the medical records of presumably of your of your the white the mother of your children, um, that's intense of anybody. Um, so yeah, we we thought it was pretty much we were probably in the right to attend his court hearings, and frankly, we went in there with a relatively open mind, um, you know, thinking that you know if if he's right about all this, we're going to back up his statements yeah and it's 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 funny it's funny kind of watching the the initial recall and reaction and something else you brought up it's like nobody's nobody was would be telling her side of the story they just wouldn't because look this guy has a huge show he's on our very platform you know and and he and he has a bunch of views you know hundreds of thousands millions of views and and what does she have who's going to listen to her i mean the only other person that i even saw go to bat for her was when Candace Owens uh, came out and was saying like look he's like he's a he's a problem you know um and and so so then they I, they they asked to seal to seal the courtroom and and it says in your article you brought up because of the protect to protect to protect his kids like th- that seems so silly because well i'll let you tell it but what was her response to that yeah, so the the argument was to seal the courtroom to protect the children, um, which which doesn't make any sense um, because Stephen has already broadcast everything about this. He's attacked his wife publicly, right? He's made notes about her, made videos about her. So their first motion immediately was to seal the courtroom, saying that the media has an unusual interest in the case, and it's like, Stephen, the reason the media has an unusual interest in the case is because you've made the case so public you've you've been upset on video you've broadcast things you know then then this ring video also came out so there's an excessive amount of drama surrounding your divorce and you know um if if i remember correctly hillary's team responded you know they didn't have a problem sealing the courtroom they didn't want to fight that um, but they did think that it was unnecessary but they didn't want to kind of you know, fight that motion if the judge was going to grant it. Um, you know, and the, the judge, if, if you read the article, the judge also eventually stated that, you know, th- it was an odd request and, and kind of out of the ordinary and said, um, you know, that she didn't see a reason to seal the courtroom. She said that, you know, th- these things are public um, and also reminded um, Stephen's team that, you know, we have a president of the United States, in this case, Donald Trump, uh, currently facing a very public trial for arguably something much more serious than a divorce Mm -hmm. and um you know that's public right and um you know that the media had the right to report on it and that we live in the united states and we're a free country and so she denied his motion to seal yeah no and um that was that was odd uh that was that was the first odd thing um the, the other thing that i found odd and and this is just based on my my opinion based on what i've seen he basically lied under oath like he got caught once when he said uh when they said did you pick wrong 
well, did you say you picked wrong in a video when you stop referencing marrying yeah. her? And he said, I never said that. And they literally were like, here's a transcript of the video you made. You literally say it here. And he went, all right, I guess I said that. And then at the end, he swears that he has never pub uh, published any photos of his children online or any of their information. And I immediately went to his Instagram. It's still up. I, yeah. I got a screenshot of it where he literally posts on Facebook and, and uh, Instagram their full names yeah. and, and pictures of them. And pictures of them, yeah. So it's... I, yeah. I, his, Sorry, no, I was just going to say, it's just this weird ability to just kind of... No, just to lie, like boldface in court. I'm like, okay, it's not true, but all right. Yeah, I wonder if he's arguing semantics, right? Um, you know, if he's saying, you know, I didn't publish them in video, I published them in, in yeah. images, right? Like, there's semantics there, right? There was a point, and I, I kind of just remembered somewhat um, the other day. Uh, and again, a lot of this, if if you're Stephen, if you want the, the truth of what happened posted, you make it as easy as, as possible for media to report on um, the facts of this issue. And then you have my you have my phone taken away, and I don't have pen and paper, so I have to go run and borrow pen and paper. And then I didn't put this in the article. My my, my damn pen ran out of ink halfway through. So I'm sitting oh, no. there like inscribing into paper these notes, you know, but, um, well, yeah, you even, you that, even said that in the article, you go at this point, I had to scramble for a pen and paper. This is all now going to sound really <laughs> disjointed and insane because yeah, and it, and you were just like that, trying and, to write. Yeah. And it, and compound it with the fact that, you know, um, the, the court reporter, the guy that's responsible for typing everything up, he, he, I think they interrupted the court three or four times to yell at, the attorneys because they kept just talking over each other and he couldn't effectively report. So if you've got a guy whose literal job profession is to take notes and he can't effectively deliver proper notes, it's going to make it a little harder for somebody like us. So, you know, there, there was a time where um, Hillary's lawyer brought up uh, a point about um, he said something along to line along the lines of has a former employee ever complained that you have rubbed your genitals on them? And Stephen replied, no, that's that's never happened. And uh, if I remember correctly, Hillary's lawyer said, you know, are you sure? Like, you're under oath. You, you're saying that nobody's ever complained about this. And he's like, no, nobody's ever complained about this. And then Hillary's lawyer said something like, there was a New York Times or New York Post or something article published where an employee complained that you rubbed your genitals on them. And he said something along the lines of, oh, yeah, that was the New York Times. And it's like, I think he was playing semantics with like, yeah, an employee didn't complain. The New York Times complained, you know? So I don't know if that's the case. I don't want to put words in his mouth. Right. But that's just kind of my opinion is maybe he's playing semantics and not, not, not lying under oath, but maybe playing with the words. God, poor Hillary, man. What a nightmare. This no, guy must have it, been. Like, it just feels like this guy's a fucking nightmare. So when, when you were, you were let's, back to the phone thing, you said uh, in the article, you pointed out that the one of his lawyers walked behind you to see what you were doing and then accused you of recording. Is, is that what happened? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, like I said, I this isn't my first court hearing. I've been to plenty, m ones of my own and ones of others. So this is not this is not my first rodeo. So I, I know that recording is illegal. I know that audio, video is illegal, photos is illegal. I mean, that's why you have court artists, right? They draw pictures. You don't have them taking photos it's because in some cases these courts are sealed um, from, from video and audio. So knowing that, you know, I'm taking notes on my phone and I see one of his lawyers get up and walk behind me. And, you know, I don't want him to see my notes. I don't want anybody to see my notes. It's private. It's not that there's anything bad in there, but it's got, they're very rough. It's got my highlights in there, maybe my opinions that I'm not going to publish, but things that I want to bring up, you know? And so I, I, I swipe my phone to the left and I, I post that screenshot of my phone and the, on, on the, on the article. And, um, I still see him standing over me and it's displaying my battery life in, in green, in green lines. Right. And he leaves. Okay. And then maybe like two minutes later, a, a court employee or government employee staff or whatever comes up behind me. It's a nice woman. And she's very polite about it. She's like, Hey, sir, I just want to let you know you can't record. And I said, yeah, I, I know. I, I show her my notes. I'm like, here's, here's my phone. Right. And she goes, okay, thanks. And then she leaves. And you know, uh, the, the judge and Steven's team and Hillary's lawyer are still going at it. Right. They're talking and I'm, I'm going back to taking notes. And all of a sudden the, the judge stops, interrupts everybody and goes, you over there with the blue shirt, come up here. And, 
gotta admit that's a little freaky right of like you're, you're in the middle of a divorce proceeding and this judge is like screaming at you to approach the bench so i go up there and she asks me my name and i identify myself and she asks if i'm there as on behalf as, as a citizen or on behalf of the media and i said i'm with the media and she asks me to identify my media outlet and she says um are you aware that you're not allowed to record um proceedings and i said yeah of course i'm aware of this and uh steven's lawyer gets up puts his hand on his heart raises up his hand and says your honor as a steward of the court or something to that effect as a steward of the court i solemnly swear that um that gentleman is recording i saw green lines that have, that uh, um uh, show audio is recording on his phone and i said your honor i'd be glad to show you my phone right now but you know i'm not recording and she goes bailiff sees his phone so they they Jesus. snatch my phone and this is without me i, I didn't have a chance to lock my phone right, right? and i don't have anything to hide so i, I kind of don't i kind of don't care but at the same time it's like it's weird it's a little it's uh, a little weird like, it's, it's read, an invasion read, of space it's an invasion yeah, of you're privacy you're gonna read texts from my wife or whatever yeah. you know my my swole pics right or yeah. whatever you know i don't want to see that <laughs> And so, um, you know, he grabs my phone and he's he's going through it. Like I'm seeing him scrolling and I see him hopping hopping screens and things like that, you know. And um, and then, you know, luckily, you know, eventually after maybe like a few minutes or I don't know how long, he takes my phone, he puts it face down and he locks it. So uh, I'm without a phone. And then maybe 10 minutes later, they go on recess. I approached the bailiff and I said, hey, can I get my phone back? And he goes, yeah, that's not happening. You, the judge wants to talk to you first. And I said, OK. I said, well, in the in the incident that I have to or the emergency, I have to leave. Can I grab my phone at that point? And he goes, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'll have to I'll have to I can see if you want, if you need to leave. And I said, no, that's fine. And I said, by the way, I'm not recording. And I said, I just want to let you know, this is my first time. I'm not recording. He goes, yeah, I know you're not recording. So, OK, cool. I go grab a pen and paper and then I go back to uh, to writing by hand. That's so annoying and and such a weird and it, and it was such a such a little petty move. Like it you know feels what I mean? petty. It, it definitely feels petty, petty. Like screw your day up kind of thing. And, and I don't know. Just yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's very. It's very clear with the with the hiding of the court date, right? So for us also, it is incredibly hard to find this court date. It's not, it wasn't on the docket. Um, it was incredibly hard to to find out when this was happening. So he or his team, or even maybe, maybe even Hillary's team, went to effort to hide this court hearing date and time, okay? So not only that, you compound that with the fact that they immediately motioned to seal the courtroom. They, they referenced multiple times their concern about me and the media being in, in the room. And then your lawyer is effectively and I don't know if, again, I don't want to put words in his mouth and I don't know his real intentions, but he effectively lied about the, what I had on my phone and getting my phone taken away. I mean, you've got, you've basically got this guy, Stephen, that, ge that genuinely does not want his, his stuff reported, despite the fact that he's going on Twitter, making videos and talking publicly about all this. Yeah, I, I think he doesn't want people reporting independently on it. He wants people to report on his statement and just go with that and right. move on, which is why I do respect you going through the effort to, to go through this. And um, because, again, as you pointed out in the article, uh, the other side of this story is not getting anything, you know, and nobody's been nobody's been telling the other side of this story except maybe us for a couple of years. But nobody we're not you. We're not journalists. Nobody's going to take us seriously. We're not going to go to a trial and sit there and take notes you know, like it's not yeah. happening. So we only have what we have. Um, I did have to ask one more thing because this, this yeah. was this was in your article. Um, it, they brought up the children, you know, safety thing, and she said that there's been no threats to the children, uh, but that somebody somebody mailed a potato. Yeah, well, 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 what? <laughs> somebody mailed them a potato. Right. Yeah, and um, you know, I didn't. I gotta admit, I, I probably would have laughed had I seen that video that you played. Yeah. Because um, now, I, now I get the potato joke. Yeah. Um, but at the time, it was just absurd. I was like, "What? A potato?" <laughs> I almost wanted to ask for a repeat. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, the, the Hillary's lawyer basically said, um, "You know, there's been no threats of violence. Uh, this is all generated by Stephen, and the only thing that we've had that's out of the ordinary is a potato was mailed to the house." And I was just like, "That's that threatening." So like, I was I was supposed to understand that that's threatening. I would. I, is, is it edible? Can I eat the potato? That sounds like maybe a gift. Like maybe it's a gourmet potato. Well, maybe I um, can, maybe I. I can explain it to you. See, sometimes yeah. Stephen wants a potato. And yeah. <laughs> one, of <my> colleagues, <laughs> yeah. one of my colleagues was like, was this a joke about him sticking the potato somewhere? Like, I, I don't know. Well, that's, that, that's, that's always our first. Well, we have this <laughs> video that, that, we've, that we've acquired. <laughs> and the only thing we'll say is, uh, so nobody, put it to you this way. Everything in that video that we played is not, is not a joke. Everything in that video is things that he does actually 
require staff or former staff to do. So that's why the video is so funny because when we first played the video, people were like, that's crazy. Who does it? I'm like, these are like from emails. Like, <laughs> these are things that yeah. he wants that somebody put together in video form. So I believe that that's what the potato thing is about. Oh, that's, that's really, really yeah, funny. You know, I, I went into this not knowing a lot of this, right? right. Because I, I, don't, I don't, you know, uh, like I said, I, my brain is so enveloped in Texas politics. When it comes to national stuff and like Steven, Steven Crowder and e-celebs, I, I really don't care. Like mm -hmm. Steven could go on an hour triad about Biden and just, I don't give a fuck, right? Yeah. Like it just does anyone here. So I don't watch his content too much. I'll watch it when he's local. Like he covers a lot of uh, local colleges here. Um, so I'll watch some of those sometimes if it's relevant or interesting. But for the most part, I don't watch a show. I don't interact with it. I don't subscribe. I don't, um, I'm not a mug club member or anything like that. I, I, I know some of his former employees or his current employees, right? Um, and so, yeah, when this this stuff about his employment and like the way he manages his team, um, I got to admit, it's kind of not surprising. You see a lot of these e celebs that are kind of like Madonnas, right? Like yeah. Madonnas, they they just have like these crazy um, uh, view of self worth. They think that they're way bigger than they actually are, and you know, it didn't surprise me when I saw these things. I I haven't been able to confirm them or deny them. I haven't looked into them myself. Nobody's yeah. emailed me documents or anything confirming these this funny video. But um, it is it is kind well. Of funny. The, the problem with that funny video and here's here's the issue that you fall into when if you if you do go down this rabbit hole as we've done, the issue is is that Stephen has uh, uh, Stephen makes all of his employees sign uh, NDAs. Yep. non-disclosure agreements so I even if people want to say something obviously they can't say anything without getting into some sort of of legal trouble he he's somebody who is granted in my opinion i mean from what you hear is his dad pretty much runs runs, runs the show over there but he's very very good at, at shielding himself from any from any sort of a public backlash and i think what hit steven the hardest was he's always portrayed himself as like you know i'm the dad and the wife stays home and which just moves on to the next thing i was going to ask they asked her when are you looking to get a job yeah that was weird man that was very weird to me because it's supposed to be like oh, i'm going to take care of you this and that because that's that's the persona that he puts out there you know the whole like you know father mother and, and then now it's like oh i chose wrong and my wife's dumb and well, it's, it's all control one car uh well, i don't want you working i want you at home and then when we get divorced well why don't you get a job you fucking you bum <laughs> like it's right, just, right right it's all meant as forms of control ndas everything like that so yeah i i mean did you get that impression <laughs> Yeah, the you know I, I saw that video by uh, was it Yashar Ali. Um, yeah. The the one car thing is weird. They didn't address that in court. Uh, that weirds me out. I think even the average middle class family has, has two, two cars, car yeah. especially especially if you have you're about to have kids. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and you know especially if like you're taking the car out and you're at work, like you want your wife to be able to leave in an emergency. You know something happens and she's got to go. It just seems odd. But I don't know. Maybe his car was in the garage or the shop. You know maybe it's broken. I don't know what the case is. He never addressed it. He's never addressed it publicly, despite being very public about everything else. He's never addressed the car issue but i mean if i'm steven and i make millions of dollars a month i'm i probably have like four or five cars so it seems a little odd that he only has one it's a control uh, even, thing. even for himself like i would have a convertible like an suv right. a truck like it just seems weird that he would only have one for himself so or not even um, or not letting her uber or give because even she even offered in that video like oh my friend will give me a ride and he was like no and i just it, it's it's very it's very and obviously the optics don't look that good when you're sitting sitting in a cigar like sitting smoking a cigar yeah. Yeah, telling you know, your people wife, were theorizing the, the the his demands for Uber. People yeah. were theorizing that it was so that he could see where she's going. He could track her on a map. Mm -hmm. He could yeah. see the destination. He knows how long she's gone, right? And whereas if she has a ride from a friend, he they could be taking them anywhere. So, right. you know, who knows? Again, just a theory. But yeah, that was weird. You know, um, I, I, he came across just as like, you know, not not super likable, you know. So I hope it, it, in his case, I hope his lawyers train him to be a little more likable. Um, he didn't come across too happy, or uh, you know, and and I think he was just mostly salty in his team. The fact that media was there covering it. Well, yeah, because I mean, look, we, we find and, and same thing with us. Like we we get a lot of shit because we we cover right wing people too when they're being stupid and doing dumb shit. So you know. And, and it's like, no, 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 no. You have to be able to listen. If you're going to be freedom of speech guy, if you're going to be everything's out in the public, if you're going to be changed my mind, if you're going to be that guy, then look, when, when it's your turn, you have to be out there and, and, and be open about it. The truth of the matter is he's not so much mad that he, in my opinion, again, that he lost his wife or anything. He's mad that he's publicly being embarrassed. Stephen doesn't want to be publicly embarrassed because in his head. It's always been our opinion. He thinks he's the next Andrew B. Breitbart. He thinks that. He really thinks that's that's his calling in life, that that's the guy. But in reality, it's somebody who, look, granted, hit it big, 
making a lot of money, has a humongous contract. All these things are great, but he still does kind of act like this petulant child who just doesn't get what he wants. He gets angry. Now, going back, I, I forget. When did the judge give you your phone back? Was it yeah, shortly so after? after? Yeah, it was after everything had settled, right? Um, the court proceedings were done. Uh, I just kind of sat there, kind of twiddling my thumbs, hoping that somebody would notice that they still have my damn phone. So mm -hmm. luckily, the the sheriff noticed, and he went up to the judge and was like, hey, you got to deal with this guy, basically. And she, she called me up, pointed at me, told me to come up. And she said, um, she basically did that thing where like they assume that you're recording. So she's like, okay, now show me the recording. And I'm like, your honor, like, it's impossible for me to do that for you because there is no recording. And she goes, uh, I want to let you know that if a recording or photo or audio or video appears online of this of this court case, um, I'm going to hold you in contempt of court and have you arrested and jailed. And I said, yeah, I'm not worried about that, though, your honor. Like, I haven't done any of this. It's not my first court proceeding. I said, I'd be more than happy to show you my phone. And I opened my phone and I showed her my notes. And I said, here's like 12 screens of notes that I've taken up to a point when you took, took my phone. And she said, OK, that's fine. Uh, you're free to go and i left that was it it was um it was odd i've never had that happen i i, I actually frankly wonder the legality of being able to seize my phone without my permission yeah and i, I don't know to go through that without my permission i don't know either i would actually like to know that too because that seems i mean i don't know if you like forfeit any rights if you're in a courtroom i don't know how that works but it does seem weird that they could just take your phone for an it just however long they want um, and, and, and yeah, I assume they can write up a warrant. I mean, she's right there. So if, if I was just like, Hey, I demand a warrant for this. She could just be like, here you go. Here you like, go. here you yeah. go. Just go through his phone. So, yeah, I, I don't like um, that though, because then it, then it's like, okay, now you're in my phone. And now that gives you this, what does that now give you? Uh, like the permission to just go through everything and try yeah, like and a pretext also, to also, find other shit. It also sets me up for potential problems. Like, or what, yeah. do, what do I, I don't know if the uh, sheriff put anything on my phone. What if he uploaded photos, like photos that are going to get me in trouble? What if he took Good things point. from my device? What if I have confidential information on my phone and now he has access to it? It opens up me to potential liability. Um, so I don't know what he did, you know, for the time he had my phone. He sat behind a computer desk going through my phone. I don't know if he hooked it up to a computer and, and cloned my device. So I, I don't know. I don't know, but it, it was definitely uh, it definitely made me very annoyed that um, that uh, Stephen's lawyer lied about that. It'd be different if it was the truth. Then right. it's like, okay, you got me. But that was a flat out lie. So yeah, it, it's um, again, it's to fuck with you. It's a control thing. It, it's you know, just like going on. What we're saying about how you know Crowder's not happy about this right now, and it's it's not just like what you said because he's you know a baby, but it's also this is the first time that I can remember where he's in a situation he's in no control of. Like he's always yeah. in control. And now it's like you're not in control. It's an open public forum that it's going to be tried in court and you're going to have media there. And even to say, like, because I'm sure there's been some people that have accused Tony of, you know, all oh, this is you're probably just, you know, trying to create a narrative or you just want some salacious headline. I read the whole article multiple times. It's literally notes. There's no yeah, speculation. He's, he's got there's there's no like you, you don't opine in it at all. Yeah. It's literally okay. You guys want me to go? I'm here. I'm gonna write down notes. Uh, Hillary says this. Lawyer said this. Stephen then says this. She says this. It's literally the article. Yeah, yeah, I mean we're we're we don't pretend to be non-biased. We're a right-wing news rag, right? right. So I'm, I'm a I'm a I'm a right-wing guy. I have right-wing opinions, and I have, I look through things in a right right-wing you know view. So I'm not pretending to be this non-biased, neutral you know journalist. Um, I'm not, and I I'll never say that I am, you know. But um, you know, it's just the 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 fact that he was censoring this so much, and you know, it would have been really easy for him. Uh, and I'm surprised his lawyers didn't even tell him to do this just you know just say something from the very get-go from the minute he's going at it with candace owens like hey guys you know i'm going through a divorce as you know there's two sides to every story i i, I don't want to get into this she's the wife of my kids i just would appreciate some privacy and some respect while i go through this and that's all i'm going to say on the matter going forward and then just be done Right. And then you wouldn't have any of this. You wouldn't have people showing up to courts. You wouldn't have, you know, <laughs> streams going on about his divorce case because there wouldn't be any drama and he wouldn't have so much attention. But he made what, two, two recordings about this. Yeah. And it's just um, it's, it's a Streisand effect in full um, in full effect. Well, because, because he thought he was bulletproof for so long that that's what it goes into when, when you when you think it's it's like in our it's like the end of Scarface when Tony Montana's on so much coke that he thinks he could take everybody down. You know, this guy has been bolstered in, not only by, by but by his parents, by everybody. He's he's always been in control. It's always been him versus the little guy. I think what hit him the hardest is 
when right wing news outlets, when right wing shows started being like, hey, man, this is the mother of your children. That really bothered him because he kept saying like, you know, I, I'm, I, and she said that he punched holes through walls, which, by the way, I think we all knew he did that. I don't think we need. It's nice to have somebody say it, but I think definitely could see he's a guy who probably punches he, holes in drywall. He's always been a guy that struck me as very wound up. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? he just yeah, very yeah, wound up. Yeah, there was there was no evidence given that he punched holes in the walls. Um, his team didn't object to it, so they didn't deny it. <laughs> although, although I don't I don't know if they would have anyway, but they didn't object to it. You know, um, so you know she said they had rage issues, and they I know that there was an objection for the word rage, and his lawyer said something along the lines of like you cannot define the word rage, and then that was uh, overturned. Yeah. Um, so the, the judge was like, yeah, you can define rage, something something to that effect. Um, so that went on you know um i don't know I, again i don't know steven personally uh, i don't know his employees i don't know his staff uh, or i should say i know one of his employees but we I mean, don't talk um but you know I, I don't i don't know what the the situation is over at crowder headquarters um i went there to get some information get a story you know report back again I, i'm not trying to be biased i have a right wing lean on everything i report um so yeah i view this from a conservative viewpoint and to me my opinion, you know, if these allegations are true, I don't think it's very conservative to punch a hole in the wall with your wife there, you know, the mother of your kids. It's just not, you know, you know, and, and you know, in, in Stephen's defense, you know, we've all been in relationships where women wound, wound us up. Right? Oh, listen, here, here oh, let me, oh, let me, let me tell you. I've dated some, <laughs> I've dated some <laughs> habitual <laughs> button pushers. Bro, bro, I'm, we've all been bro, there, bro, right? bro I'm, I'm, I'm Cuban. I know 100% how much they can wine. Trust me, I know. So yeah. I get it. Well, look, we all get angry in this and that. But I think it's not so much getting wound up and getting angry because, look, look women can be fucking insufferable. We know that. But the, 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 the other thing is like, but we're also not the ones portraying ourselves as these beacons of the conservative family and look how great I am and look, I do things right you know the father should work and the mother should stay home and it, it's it's to us it's always reek like you know the, those evangelicals that talk about like you know all the bible stuff then they get caught having like you know gay sex in a bus terminal you're like okay you know i don't care what you do in your private life but now you're the one that's portraying mm -hmm. yourself being a certain way and the other thing that i found odd you was were going the, off about gay people for years right and then we caught you in a bus station right like, like so you you were having gays jailed right and, <laughs> like, and i, and, and I and I also find that if this, if this, if the, what was happening to, to to Crowder now was happening to Hunter Biden, for example, Crowder would be covering it. Crowder would be reading all this stuff. Crowder would be saying all this stuff. Crowder would be saying that's the mother of your children. Making that's bad songs about it. Making terrible parodies. They're so bad. Parody songs about it and stuff like that. But but the other thing that I thought was wild was she again. This is her side. We don't know what's true or not. But he, he wasn't there when his kids were born, which again I thought was really weird. You know, it, it felt it felt like why weren't why weren't you there? You know, I, and look, the other thing, the one other thing that that I want to bring up here is it, with in relation to what he said was, he went out of his way to bring up that he had a medical procedure that was so serious that insurance even covered it. Now, the reason that's anyone who hears that outside goes, why would you bring that up? Who cares? Was because. When Candace Owens was talking about it, she said it was a cosmetic procedure that he didn't need it because he had that, you know, some people have that sunken bird chest here in the middle. And look, he works out a lot. He's very vain. You could see he he was he want, she was saying that was a cosmetic procedure and he wants to make sure. And his thing was like, it couldn't have been a cosmetic procedure. Insurance covered it. I'm like, all right, come on, man. Yeah. That's not a he, really... He, he made it sound like his chest was slowly collapsing like a fucking roof with too much snow on it. Yeah. And it's like, that's not what it is. It's just, you know, say what it is. The other thing I found interesting, and you wrote this in the article, is that he also weaved in this little thing about COVID. Yeah. And he was like, well, COVID was limiting the number of people that could be um, allowed in the hospital or whatever. And I'm thinking, so Steven Crowder, the guy who has made his entire fortune on manufacturing culture warrior shit. You, you have to have a crusade, if you you know what I mean, to make money. Of course, of course. So you're telling me that the reason you weren't at the birth of your children was because they wouldn't let the father of these kids in the hospital room during the birth because of COVID, and you failed to bring that up? You didn't make that a huge crusade? Like, the, he could have made millions from, you know, you're not going to keep me from my kids, you know, and he could have went on this whole, that that's... That's his business model. How did right. he not? Yeah, it's, so not, I don't it's believe not even that. just that. I mean, even if he didn't want to, uh, and, th and again, this is my opinion. Right, um, of course. And we, don't, we won't know until, I mean, if, I don't know, he's still intent on releasing medical records. But um, 
if even if he was intent on following COVID rules, uh, I would assume if there was a, a if there was a limitation on who could be in the room, the father would say, "Hey, dad, can you can you bail out for a second? We can swap out while I see the birth of my kids." Or, "Hey, mom and yeah. dad and sister, can you can you swap me out and put me in so I can be there when you know cut the umbilical cord or whatever?" I, I assume again, he and then he also claims that there's video of him there. So I don't know. It was really it was really odd. We're, I, we haven't seen that right. Like, there was right. no. Um, I think some evidence was submitted, and I did see a photo submitted of him holding his baby oh yeah the the one the, the one, one, the, one the one that he posted that he said he's never posted a picture of his kids yes yeah the yes. one from instagram where he's in a hotel room yeah uh i think it was him shirtless and he was yep. holding babies so like he i know that his his legal team did submit that but um you know the the court proceedings were only two and a half hours long you know they claim there's more evidence of her in erratic behavior what was submitted as far as erratic behavior that was the part funniest was, part it was yeah it was, i did i did think it was a little odd i mean i assume Assume, you know, I assume that if you're going to cite erratic behavior, you lead with, I assume you would lead with, I'm not a lawyer, but I assume you lead with at least some strong stuff. And he led with the fact that, um, I guess there was a Twitter post up that had his address on it and that it was up for several months and she didn't inform him that, that, that his address was posted online, which seems odd to me. You know, Steven's team, not only Steven, but Steven's employees also have pretty big uh, influ uh, presence on Twitter. I mean, I have I have his staff in my replies um, defending him pretty incessantly. Um, Tara Price and um, Casey Hill are in my replies pretty upset about our cover our coverage, uh, which is fine. They're, they're in the right to, you know, I... I you got to make a living. The economy shit. So you take jobs where you can. So <laughs> hey, I, I don't, I don't, amen, brother. I don't blame them. Amen, know? brother. Yeah, on you your know? side. Like, I don't, I don't hold, I don't hold Steven's employees or staff to any kind of ill will. I mean, they're just doing their job. I would, I would, I hope my team would defend me if something happened. Right. But, um, you know, so, you know, he cited that there was this, this tweet online and with their address and that he was mad that it took his wife two months to inform him or several months to inform him, which seems odd because if you're not, if you don't have a Twitter account, how are you supposed to see, tweets about you you know like i don't know it just it just seems weird to me i don't have a i don't have a i don't think i have a pinterest account so i have something gets posted on pinterest i'm not going to know unless somebody shows it to me so that was odd and then um there was another thing about what was it basically that uh you know she she submitted the uh the, yeah the ring video right yeah um you know he he says that she submitted it and then he it then later admits that it wasn't it was his wife or his wife's family that submitted it to this um, this journalist, right? And you know, in again, semantics in play, right? I mean, I, I we can assume we can assume that the way his wife's family got a hold of it is his wife gave it to his family, and then his family gave it to or her family, and then her family gave it to the reporter. So it's kind of like he's, he's technically right, right? Right. Um, so I don't know, but I mean, you know, are you mad that a ring? I mean, you're you're talking about releasing medical records, and you're mad that a ring video was posted. It seems kind of weird to me. Yeah, but I, I also understood here that the judge says that neither side now is supposed to talk publicly about the case. So they've even he was going to rece release medical records that might hinder him from doing that because the judge. Right, was that's like, true. Yeah, yeah. In his defense, you know, and I, 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 admittingly, in his defense, yeah, he can't defend himself now his, and his lawyer made that point right like right. we we want the ability to be able to talk about this case because steven has his reputation to defend right um it, if it, he's got to be able to talk about his side of things and um you know that, that but she put in a gag order so you know i'd love to you know you can um with court transcripts to my knowledge uh court transcripts you could order them um it's fifteen hundred dollars is what my lawyer wow. estimated for these court transcripts um i'm trying to get up the funds i don't have mug club money so i'm trying to get up the funds because I would love to release them to the public uh, for You want to chip in on that? Hey, yeah, we'll throw, chip in on that? Hold on, we'll throw something yeah, in. We'll, hey, throw we'll in happily that. throw some in on we'll that. We'll go halvesies? Yeah, we'll go halvesies. Let's get it done. We'll but, do uh, it. All right, all right. So, yeah, like, I'm all about transparency, right? And so I see a lot of Steven Crowder's fans, um, you know, wanting the, the transcripts. And I agree with them, right? I mean, you know, it his team took away my phone i was you know up to a point the the notes that i was able to take were just best that i was able to write down with them talking at a million miles per hour um so there's probably a good amount of stuff that it, maybe i missed right uh, the, the 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 genitals on a face or genitals on a person <laughs> is something that i missed to report right so yeah. i should have probably wrote that up but yeah you know want to order this transcript would love to publish it publicly um you know if you guys are going in i'll give it to y'all and you can run with it right i really don't care um i'm all about just getting information out and uh, letting the public decide um so i wanted to also ask like do, do, in your just i'm just asking your opinion here does it seem at least odd in your opinion too that he's just going for like full-blown full-on custody 
when right now yeah. they have shared custody. It feels petty to me for somebody to be like, I want full custody. That's it. And then, and then to say she's got like erratic behavior to me, like I want full custody. This woman's erratic should be like, she's on drugs. She's living out of motels or, you know, one night I woke up and she'd put uh, the baby in the fucking oven and the fucking, you know, the turkey in the crib or something. Okay, I, remember, I, fucking... I remember that LSD <laughs> story. Yeah. That's one of my you favorites. You know what I mean? Then you go, okay, your honor, I'm, I want an emergency injunction right now. But it just seems like he's like, yeah, she doesn't have a Twitter. Didn't tell me her address was on Twitter. And you're like, what? That's yeah, you know, when the, when the case started and they mentioned that he was going for full custody, I was like, wow, um, that's a pretty intense, that's, oh. extreme ask. So I'm ready to hear that, like, Hillary does drugs and, like, <laughs> yeah, she's cheating something. on him with, like, 20 other men and, like, all this other stuff, right? She's coming home at, like, 4 in the morning drunk. Like, I'm, re I'm ready to hear these things. And, you know, the first thing up is... Twitter complaints, and then the second thing is this ring video, and I'm just like, where's the beef, right? Where's the where's the real stuff? Where's the the crazy stuff? And presumably he's not done, right? I mean, we've got more court cases. We only had two and a half hours, um, so I assume that he's I and I assume he's got a lot more evidence to propose, and maybe he's saving the best for last. So maybe we're going to hear some crazy stuff uh, at the next court hearing. But from what he presented, um, the judge did not. I mean, the judge says, you know, I'm not um, I'm not leaning towards changing any custody. She didn't give a ruling, but at the time she said, I'm not convinced so yeah because they currently have like a shared deal so it's kind of right. petty for anybody right, the, any uh, one the, side to come in and go i want full custody is usually a pretty i mean i think yeah deal. what's best unless like you said unless she's doing something horrendous you probably want both kids to have both parents or the, the kids have both parents in their lives right yeah. yeah, and then, you know, some people sent me some DMs showing that T Crowder has admitted that in the past, mm -hmm. where he supports mom and dad raising the kids in in a way. I haven't seen, I mean, I don't know the veracity, I don't know if those are real or not, but I've been sent DMs of him saying and talking about how, like, you know, p kids need their mom and their dad, right? And so, uh, ideally, if he believes that, you would want your kids to also have a mom. Um, and I also assume that just Crowder is insanely busy. I mean, I, I'm insanely busy. I couldn't imagine raising twins by myself. I would, I, if I was in Crowder's situation, my, my parents would essentially be raising my, my kids, um, just cause I, I don't have time to deal with it. I'm running a empire a, a media empire and, you know, staff, I don't have time to deal with two twins. And so, you know, in, in my opinion, I would think, you know, you let, let the kids stay with mom and you get them on the weekends and you be that cool weekend dad and maybe get them for the summer. And I said that, I said that, I said that on Nightwave. I was like, yeah, I was like, I want to, I want to be weekends and summers dad. I'll be the fucking coolest dad. Yeah. You buy the ice cream, take them to the mall. There's no school. They just associate you with no school. Yeah. 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 You know, I'm product of divorce. My dad was the weekend dad and he was, he was cool as hell. And, you know, we talk every day and, you know, he was the summer dad and we went out and we, he took me out playing Pokemon cards and tournaments and shit. That was, that was, he was the cool dad, right? My mom was like, I fucking hate you. You're making me do my homework. And dad wants to take me to play Pokemon cards, you know? She's so yelling I, you at know, you to get uh, your coat. You're going to miss yeah, the bus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, with the way their setup is, you know, he gets the kids three days a week plus some Saturdays and she gets them the rest of the time. And, um, to me that, to me, that seems fair, especially with how busy it is and she's a full-time mom's like what she what she got going on anyway you might as well let her take yeah. care of the kids i, I don't know it just seems I, I mean i i mean look it's it probably in my guess that sounds like a she probably knows he's not going to get it but probably a setup to not pay as much would be my guess you know yeah, which also would would make sense considering that his his lawyer was pretty in, 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 insistent about asking about her employment um, like, right. hey, when are you getting a job? Do you have a job? When's the last time you had a job? I mean, there was a, quite a few questions uh, concerning her employment, you know. Um, so I can only assume that's partially to get the, the legal – or not the legal fees, but the alimony a little lower than it needs to be. It's like, Your Honor, this woman has no intention of working. She's going to live off my wealth. So he's so, worth he's um, worth millions. She's got two – they got twins. If, if she's got partial custody or whatever, she's going to have to get something from the divorce anyway. Well, te so, Texas, so if, I know Texas for sure. I, know, I think it's a 50-50 state, and then yeah. it's like 25% for the kids, if there's two kids, of like ongoing money. But the, Yeah, I can the, see why he's, fr if that's the case, <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't really know too much about Texas divorce too much, but if that's the case, then I can see why he's so insistent on, on fighting this as much as possible. I mean, that's 50% yeah, of your worth plus 20%. If you're forward, worth this kind of money, what, 17 years. how much of an effect is her going to get a job as a receptionist at a fucking dentist? this office is she gonna work at a pink berry and they're gonna go wow you just saved millions here steve yeah. <laughs> it's still you're still dude, dude. 
You fucked up, yeah, and now you're in a situation where a lot you, of money. Yeah, well, you know, he's got four lawyers. Four lawyers, yeah. Lawyers I mean, four and... lawyers are not cheap, and I guarantee he doesn't have cheap lawyers. He has really good lawyers. Maybe he should have just fucking put the medicine on his own fucking dog. Yeah, put the gloves on <laughs> and put the medicine on your dog. Jack Cat donated twenty dollars. Says this twenty dollars for the Crowder transcript. You boys are doing the <laughs> Lord's work. Wang, 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 Niles, Niles, Van Wilder is Burke Kreischer. Wang, Wang. Thank you, sir. We will. We, yeah, we'll trust go me. Pe- yeah, people. People want to know about this. We. I want to. When's know about the next this. date? Yeah, do you know when the next uh, don't is? don't have that yet. You know, I've had I've had a lot of reporters reach out to me to ask to attend this. So I I'm more than happy to share dates with whenever we get them with what other media wants to be there. Um, like I said, I'm not trying to make this an exclusive. It's not like our article is not a paywalled article. I had I had people accusing me of trying to profit off of this. We don't run ads. You know, we make money off subscriptions. We've got right. a little donate at the button at the top of our page. But, you know, we're not uh, we're not trying to profit off of his misfortune. We're just trying to cover news. And, you know, in a roundabout way, yeah, it gets his media attention and hopefully some subscribers. But, you know, particularly I, I have no ill will towards Crowder. I don't know him on a personal level. I just know his stuff. And I have liked his content. I really don't know him from a personal level um hopefully I, I maybe he'll show more towards his side at the next court hearing but nothing against the guy um i just want to be able to show another side of the story which i think we've done pretty well yeah you know it's but you know our, the whole like you're not trying to even if people were trying i'm not 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 saying that you are but even if people were trying to profit off of some misfortune that's his business model too like it, it, it's hard to when you do something like that right to then get mad at people for like he's profit. Let's go off of the stories that he's profited on their misfortune. You know, happens yeah. all the time. You know, whenever something bad happens, a hundred Biden, he's talking about it. And look, we all do. We all listen, man. We all in a little way profit off it. That's the way it works. Like you said, the economy shit. You know, but you know, it, it, it's you're now getting mad that people are doing to you what you built your empire right off of, which is criticizing people getting in their face changing their mind you know uh, making money off of people's misfortunes you know but making fun of making fun of, uh, of of bernie sanders like it's that's 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 the game and the problem is once you're in the game you're in the game you know what i mean and and that's you, he's always wanted our opinion we always our crowders always wanted to be the dude he's wanted to be the the rock star the the the, the it, crowders in the building you know the rock the rock star is here check it out here he is well, this is the downside that comes with that. Look what Johnny Depp went through. You know, the Crowder's obviously a tiny percentage of what Johnny Depp is, but that's what you get when, when you're at the top. People are going to microanalyze your life, especially if you're agitating people, which mm-hmm. you do. If I was getting, like, a divorce right now, I'd be thinking, fuck, here we go. Yeah. Like, people are going, you know what I mean? Like, not on a level of him, but there's, you're like, ah, there's going to be a fucking, you know, there's going to be a hundred or so people that are like, I need every detail about his shit. Because you're like, oh, here we go. And there's going to be people reading the transcripts. Cause you it's know, like, and, 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 you know, maybe I would even be one of those people that's like, hey, you know, leave this alone. If he if he specifically asked for privacy, but but he didn't. He asked for medical records to be released. He asked for trans or um, court motions to be re- released. He made multiple videos, right? Mm-hmm. And so if he was, if he he was on one side saying, hey, this involves my kids and like I want privacy and I don't want to bring attention and stress out my, my ex-wife or the mother of my kids. And, you know, I want to focus on doing good conservative stuff and, and take care of my staff and, you know, deal with this divorce. And I just appreciate some privacy at this time. Then I would I would be there right with everybody else being like, hey, just leave this guy alone. Like, you know, you guys just let him let him deal with this and move on with your life. But. He did the exact opposite. He's done everything opposite to that. And so it, it does seem hypocritical that now he's very anti-free speech, very anti-media, very anti-coverage and wanting everything sealed and stuff. It's just he's totally flipped. And you got to ask yourself, what's the motivation for that? Why would you why would you flip all of a sudden? Is it because you control the narrative and now you don't and now you want to shut it down or because something's actually wrong or, or what, what what's the issue there? It does seem odd. Yeah, it's it. it, you sh- it really you should have had a good zinger to come back at when they go. You can't record in the courtroom. You go. I know it's a courtroom. It's not a phone call with Jeremy Boring. Hey, and then do the double guns. At. That's the other thing. That's a good point. He all of this like be careful. But he recorded a phone call, a contract negotiation with Jeremy Boring, and now you're like, oh, please don't cover my life. You you do this. You want to be James O'Keefe, <laughs> undercover journalist, but then when it happens to you, it's like clutching at your at your pearls, which you probably have in your costume department, Crowder. Let's be honest. <laughs> and like you said, it wasn't like you said, I want privacy in this matter. He came out with a video. The tone of the first video was, look, you don't know this bitch. That was the tone of that video, <laughs> yeah, where you was. went, um, what? Like, what? most people would just, like you said, go, 
hey, look, guys, it's not a great time right now. You know, my family's going through it. We got kids. It's, like you said, it's my mother and my kids. We're, we're kind of rolling around in the mud a little bit in court right now, but I don't want any ill will towards her, and I don't want to talk about it on the air. But he came yeah, out with this whole, like, look, you don't know what what her, <laughs> oh, my side of it. She's a fucking, and you're like, why are you freaking out, dude? <laughs> yeah, can you imagine, like, you know, the Internet's forever, and we, you know, back in, back, I don't know how old you guys are, but, like, back in my day, like, old. this stuff wasn't old. kept forever, right? Like, we didn't, it was before the Internet. Yeah, all my MySpace shit forever. is gone, bro. Thank my God. MySpace. Right? Shit is gone. <laughs> yeah, all that's gone. And so, you know, these kids are going to grow up and they're going to find this video of their dad talking yeah. shit about their mom. It's not, <laughs> yeah, that's not, not going nice. to make them feel too good, provided that they still even have a relationship with him at this point, uh, depending on his attitude. So I don't know. It just I would hate to see that. I would hate to see, you know, my parents like talking shit about each other online and inviting media coverage and dad talking about releasing mom's medical records and calling potentially allegedly calling her crazy or hinting that she's got medical problems or mental problems. It's just it's not a good look. Um, I don't know. You'd think his lawyers, he's got so many that one of them would be like, hey, man, like grab a drink. Let's talk this out. Let's 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 like ask for privacy. Let's lay low and just forget about it. And I I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know why no, none of Crowder's people he's got, checked him, he's, checked his ego there. He's got like Saul Goodman lawyers. They're like, listen, I'll plant drugs in her car. <laughs> she goes to the courthouse. I'm going to look. I got a guy. He gets in the trunk nice and clean. Like, All right, go for it. <laughs> Your Honor, I have it on very good authority. She's oh, got fuck. meth in her car right now. Oh, they go out there to pound a meth. Oh, but no, Tony, this has been. Uh, 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 very, thank, very, very hey man, thanks for coming on. We, we um, really do appreciate it. Current Revolt on Twitter, uh, currentrevolt.com. What else uh, would you like people to find you or, or, or come get at you? I, I've been posting the article in the uh, in the chat room as well, which I think yeah, everyone should Yeah, I appreciate that. If, if you guys are listening and you're, you're, you lean right, you're right-wingers, um, subscribe to us. If you don't live in Texas, you're going to think we're boring as hell, so don't bother <laughs> reading us. Uh, don't bother subscribing because you're just going to get Texas news in your, in your inbox every morning. But if you live in Texas and you want Right wing news. Uh, subscribe to us at coronavirus.com. But nice meeting y'all. Appreciate you guys having. Dude, me. thank course, you so man. much for thank coming so much, on, man. Dude. Yeah, thirty seven hundred watching on Rumble. I'm sure we got a couple. Yeah, of we got some new people. So. Yeah, we're, we're good. <laughs> and by, and next next time you you're in court, you want to come on. You're more than welcome to come on, man. Yeah. Yeah, we plan on covering it, um, provided that they don't try harder to cover the court date. So we should be able to find right. it. Um, and when we do, we'll uh, let y'all know. And we go out your way every once in a while too, man. So oh, good. when we're yeah, out there, we'll uh, we'll link up and uh, get you a steak. Yeah. Yeah, man. Hey, thanks so much tony we really appreciate thank it. you man nice meeting you take it take easy care. buddy see you later that uh, rule goes yeah that was great man that was great hearing what was happening in there that that was that was that was wonderful uh thank you, you. there's a bunch of people running around rumble right now going Fuck. well i mean we're on the front page no i know i'm not saying like in trouble trouble but i'm just saying you think there's a couple little emails going around <laughs> I don't know. What the fuck are they doing? <laughs> what we're doing is showing how amazing Rumble is. It doesn't matter. Diversity in opinions. It's diversity of opinions. Free, free speech here. That's what Rumble believes in, and that's what we believe here at Revenge of the Sis. Uh, man, that was that was great. Again, go check out his Twitter. Uh, thank you to everybody. Yeah, we'll figure out about those court, court's transcripts. Let's figure that out.